pictures? Picture is coming. Okay, I'll talk while picture is coming. Um, welcome to this talk. Uh, I will talk to you about things that you probably don't think that much about normally. Uh, and that is, what is the difference about domain or object-oriented data structures and tabular data structures? I mean, how often do you write code and think like, oh, I'm going to use um, um, hash maps or linked lists or something and think how much memory it's going to use and consume and all that stuff. Anyone does that every time they write code? Okay, two people, nice. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's very good, but the rest of you, most of us don't, and that is, uh, that's what we're gonna talk a little bit about. Well, quite a bit, for one hour, almost. So, um, I usually do this talk together with a friend of mine called uh, Donald. Um, he is the creator of uh, the Eclipse collection that we'll be talking a, bit, a little bit about as well. Uh, but my name is Rustam. I, um, I'm doing this talk alone this time today, and I am uh, working in a uh, company in Norway called Computers. We have an office here as well. Uh, we have uh, the, a team working here in Romania, in Bucharest as well. I have been a uh, Java champion for quite some time, since uh, 2017. Since 2019, I've been also Google Developer Expert for Cloud, and I work quite a lot with code, with architecture, and uh, things like that. Uh, I also run uh, some communities in, uh, back in Oslo, in, in, in Norway as well. So, enough about me. Let's think about the, the, the thing that was the cause of, uh, and the start of uh, Eclipse Collection. So, Back in the days, in 2004, um, most of us probably were not really even developing anything professionally. I started doing that a little bit later myself, two years later, so 2006. Uh, 2004, it was a bit of a problem because we had a, okay, what do we do? We um, have a lot of data, but we don't have that much memory. We don't have that much uh, space to store that in the memory. And uh, Eclipse Collections was born inside the financial kind of publication. So Donald was working in, in, a, in a bank where they needed to process a lot of data, right? And then uh, you have to, admit, uh, you know, you've, you basically have to fit six gigs of, gigs of uh, stuff, of data, into a four, bo a four gig box. What happens? Well, you know, it doesn't fit. Um, and then you have a millions of tiny little lists, sets, maps, and all these kind of things uh, in the memory, and they're taking a lot of space, and you can't really make it work. Well, you can wait for bigger machines, uh, more memory addresses, 64-bit, all that kind of things, but you know, that all came later. So what you have to do is basically what, anyone have seen Martian, the movie, or the book? Yeah, so that's a quote from the, uh, from a uh, slightly redacted uh, quote from that movie, which basically was the idea that had to be done with memory. So in the face of overwhel overwhelming odds, I am left with the only one option, I'm gonna have to science the shit out of it. So that's what was the idea, right? A little bit later, we had a bit different kind of thing, right? We, now we have already 64-bit uh, JDK. We actually had, after a while, something called compressed oops. Uh, and um, we could actually put 32-bit uh, uh, references and uh, into a 64-bit, so then you know, you put things into 64-bit uh, machines, but now you have much more memory addresses to, to address, right? And then when you need to do that, you will use more, even more memory because, well, you, you're doubling your address size. Uh, then they introduced something called compressed oops that will actually still go down to 32 bits uh, up to a certain point, and... Um, it still is like that. So if your memory, if, if, you're, uh, if you're giving less than 32 gigs to your Java uh, virtual machine, it will actually turn that thing on by default. But um, 
that all that was still not there. Uh, you still had issues of putting things into a memory, and that was the idea of trying to write your own data structures. Because like most of us who studied IT, computer science, we did data structure courses, right? Uh, it was very exciting to, run, to write your own trees, and uh, you know, there, there, are, there, there are spaces in the front. Come forward. <laughs> Everything else is full, but there is uh, the first row, the scary row. Uh, <clears throat> and a little bit on the second, actually, too. Anyway. Um, oh, this is nice. Packed room. Um, <clears throat> so the idea was to you need to write your own memory-optimized uh, sets, lists, and maps, and all those kind of things. Because... Um, when you, when you take those courses and you're forced to write your own tree implementations and all these kind of things, you just do it just because you've been told to do it. Oh, well, you know, we have to have this node thing and we have to have uh, pointers to this and that. And if you're going to do a list, you have to point forward, you have to point backwards. Well, the professor said to do that. I'll just do it and fine. But you never think of like, oh, how much memory will that take? How much memory will that take if I do one million of those? data structures or whatever. Here you had to do that. So uh, rewinding a little bit, a few 20 something years forwards, we have a new problem, right? So now we are trying to do all this kind of big data stuff. And a lot of people would, uh, for some reasons, think that one language is better than the other or something like that. So what we want to show here is that you can actually do all this data, big data processing, and this kind of stuff in Java as well. And um, to do that, we have tried to simulate um, a typical problem that where you have a bunch of data. Typically, in this case, we did CSV data files, so comma-separated value files, uh, with a lot of data that needs to be loaded and processed and also measure how much memory it actually takes on, on the machine. Um, we also wanted to, to look into how we can actually make the memory thing more efficient. And we also wanted to look into this thing called row-based approach versus column-based approach. Because a lot of places, when you, when you think of row-based approach, it's very typically it's uh, object-oriented, right? You have an object with a bunch of parameters. Each of those parameters are basically the, the values in the column that you have all the way to, to the right. Um, what, did we, what did we look at? So what we looked at, obviously we had to look at something that is coming as batteries included, so uh, Java collections, so Java built-in stuff. Um, also streams, obviously. Uh, then we looked into uh, this thing called Eclipse collections that I already mentioned a few times, that is, um, a, a, a third-party library written in Java for Java as uh, from the uh, kind of battle-tested environment in the financial sector. Uh, it was in used internally for quite some time, then it got open source, then it was uh, put under the Eclipse, uh, the umbrella of Eclipse Foundation, and, and so on and so on. Then there was another uh, person that uh, looked at that and was like, hey, this is really cool. Let's do the data frame, uh, data frame implementation on top of Eclipse Collections. And that's where the data frame EC came, uh, came along. And EC, well, obviously stands for Eclipse Collections. And data frame, it's a little bit of if you think of in the Python world, kind of in the pandas and that kind of uh, things, there are several other uh, data frame-like implementations and also uh, uh, set imp implementations out there in, in Java uh, that exist. And people try to implement and reinvent their will, uh, a new wheel, uh, over and over again. Some other uh, for, for, for their own like homegrown libraries as well. But we're, we're going to concentrate on those. So. Um, obviously, since both of us were kind of serious uh, serial conference speakers, uh, we had to do conference data, obviously, right? Um, so we generated, this is a little example of the, um, it's actually kind of weird, funny start for this thing. So I was having a list of all the conferences I've been speaking at. 
and I needed to generate some statistics. And then I realized how much I can over-engineer that thing. Yeah, that happened. So um, you have a table. Uh, you have, this is just pretty printed CSV. It's just, uh, actually, by the way, all the slides you see here, they are on GitHub, they are in ASCII doc, and we're actually looking at ID. It's not PowerPoint, it's not anything. It's actually an ID running there in the background. So this is a pretty printed uh, CSV. You have a name of an event, a country, city, a start date, an end date, a kind of, what kind of sessions do you have, what number of tracks it has, session speakers, cost, and all these kind of things. As you can see, all the numbers are, in this case, are the same, but just, it's just an example, right? Uh, <clears throat> so different value types, Different uh, things, you have strings, you have some lists there, you have some integers, you have some date objects, all these kind of fun things. And then we generated, so I wrote a, 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 a little script that would uh, generate fake uh, synthetic data. So we generated uh, one million of those rows. It took well, a little bit uh, shy of 90 megs on disk. Then we did 10 million, which, well, increased by the number of 10. Uh, kind of linearly, so 900-ish megabytes on disk, 25 million, and that was 2.2 gigs. So now we have to process 2.2 gigs of data, read it in, do something with it, and dump it to uh, some other stuff. We generated some random event names with just random uh, text for of a fixed length, so max length. Uh, fixed set of countries, fixed set of city names, and dates were only limited for one year, just for, for the heck of it. Now, now we needed to measure the memory cost, and this is also a little bit of a, it's also a little bit of, a, of, of an, to give you an idea how you can do it on your projects. Obviously, you don't need to count conferences uh, or do something, but you can do it for your own larger enterprise applications. We've been working, I've been working on a very large Java applications where uh, doing like uh, heat dumps and uh, analyzing the objects and trying to figure out what the bottlenecks are was actually a real problem. So uh, one of the ways of doing that is using JAL. So JAL is uh, something uh, called uh, a Java object layout. Uh, it's a really nice tool. It's very easy to plug it into your code, and then actually call it. We'll see output of that JAL thing uh, all through the presentation. And also, we have, um, so there are a few links there. Obviously, they're not clickable for you now, but they will be clickable for you when you look at that uh, through, the, through the website. Um, the, the, the interesting thing here is, first, to understand how it works. Also, that you need to do a little bit of magic. That's a little hint there, uh, what you need to do to make it work for records. And uh, then you're good to go. Memory considerations. So what did we really want to look at? So the, we wanted to look first how much memory boxed versus primitive data types take. Like, is there a big difference or not? Uh, mutable versus immutable data structures. Do you want to have, um, do you need to think about it? Like, do I need to, do, can I just freeze my array and call it immutable, or do I really have to bother about that? Uh, Row-based versus column-based structures, we talked a little bit about that, and also about whatever the future will bring. So what will come afterwards in, 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 in the future, in the new projects that are part of OpenJDK as well. So that will be at the end. First of all, a first exercise for you. What do you think the difference is between those two classes? Well, first, what is the difference? And then the next question will be, what will be the memory difference, you think? So what's the difference? See the difference between these two uh, classes? Well, it says it also in the, in the title, in the name of the class, but Anyone? Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, it's not really rocket science kind of thing, but it's just, you know, makes you pay attention a little bit, and you will do that a few more times. So you have boxed values here, primitive values on there. Generally, uh, in a string sense, 
It's just one capital letter. That's the difference, right? Yeah, and well, exactly. That's why I said in the string sense. So in the memory sense, any guesses? Five times? Right, let me see. Right side is, yeah, no, you mean left side is? Yeah, this is bigger. Yeah, yeah, that's what, yeah, sorry, yeah. Uh, it's, when you're standing the, the other way, you're just like right, left, the other left, yeah. Sorry about that. So um, this is how the output from JAW looks like. And then uh, you were actually pretty much very close, five times, roughly. If you're very good at uh, multiplying numbers, big numbers in your head, or dividing, that's about five. Uh, so you have uh, the, the primitive version that is pretty much nothing, 72 bytes. The other one is 368. You know, 368 bytes. I mean, come on. Like, really? Like, do we really need to think about that? Well, try to multiply that by a million, 100,000. Try to put that on a cloud. Try to see a bill. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, you really don't need that. And it's, it's, it's also very, very subtle there. Autoboxing is evil. And it, <laughs> and it hides, and it hides, it brings a lot of memory bloat as well. So, um, and in reality, there was not that much difference, right? You just, all, all that happened in this case was that you had a whole object around it. And you can see, right, you can see also uh, uh, sum of uh, memory, so sum of all objects uh, and uh, per type. And in total, and this is, uh, this is, by the way, how the JAWL output would look like, at least if you run this two-footprint method. Okay, let's do more fun things. So this is boxed uh, versus alternative versus a primitive uh, t uh, sets, right? So we have here a JDK box set. We're doing interval of 1 to 10, so 10 digits. Um, then we're doing a mutable set uh, of um, Eclipse Collection boxed set. And then we are doing um, a, a Eclipse Collection primitive set. So now we're doing sets, and now we're doing um, JDK, Eclipse Collection, boxed, and primitive. Look at the numbers. And this is just uh, a hash map of, um, so what you do in, in, in the just regular JDK thing, you just have a hash map, right? You just put those 10 uh, things into, into hash map and, well, 640 bytes. And then you can do roughly half-ish of that, a little bit less than a half if you go with a um, Eclipse Collection implementation of a set. It's still mutable set. We'll look into um, in, immutable sets in a bit. And then, uh, but that's boxed ones, right? You can still see that it's integer with a large, with a capital E, I. Um, and then we can compress it even more. We just put dumb integers into that thing, and well, 100 and, 20. Hundred and twenty bytes from six hundred and forty. So you can compress your uh, footprint by doing nothing except for right choosing the right um, right um, data type. So again, uh, using hash set is a probably not a very good idea, especially when you, when when you use it a lot when your memory has a lot of um, those hash, set, hash sets stored in a memory. Um, don't box primitive values as, lo as long as you don't really have to, as long as there is no really reason. And sometimes, if you are not really careful, auto boxing may happen for you, so you're not really aware of that. So, you know, have a look at things. Maybe sometimes you really want to dump your. Uh, uh, memory and object layout into into a print like this or something similar or heap or something like that and have a look at that what happens what is 
happening there. Sometimes it's, you have control over it, sometimes obviously you don't because it's a library implementation that you're using and so on, so on, so on. But think about that, be aware of that kind of thing. Um, okay, now let's talk about, so this was mutable. So this is things that you can modify. What if you put those things into freezer and just say, well, you know, they're not, they're immutable. So now we're creating a uh, two values, a set of two values. You do add one, two, and then you put that into a JDK immutable set. You put that into... Um, JDK immutable set versus immutable set. See the difference? Same numbers, same thing. We went from nearly 300 bytes to almost 50, well, 60, something like that, 56, right? Again, hash set will use a lot of memory. Um, mutable sets are very nice. You need them to create the sets and lists and all those val uh, data structures. But you can, when you're done with them, store them in the memory as immutable sets. So basically what you do is, um, very often you will have like two immutable sets or, or something like that. Um, by the way, this Notation that you see here is kind of standard notation, so you'll find documentation for this kind of things. If you find uh, the little bracket L thing, for example, a little bit weird and stuff like that, it's, it's actually quite documented, uh, so it's, it's easy to figure that uh, out, what they usually mean. Usually it's uh, references to types of uh, integers or to types of lists, or, so this is a list, the, the L thing. This is fun. Do you see something really weird happening here? There are several weird things happening here. But um, now we're looking at immutable sets, right? It's, they're all immutable. Uh, but now we're the blue ones, are, or the first ones, if, if you don't see colors. The first one is uh, JDK, and the second one is Eclipse Collection. First, um, what's the first weird thing you see here? Don't make me do all the work. They're getting pretty close at, at there. Yes, we'll get there. We'll, we'll, I'll, I'll explain why. That's, really, that's a good one, yes. But look at the other end. Do you see anything weird there? Yes. But look at the other end. Do you see anything weird there? Yeah. First one is quite big. And then the yeah. other weird thing, the third big. weird thing. Yes. And then the other weird thing, the third weird thing. Yes. You're, you win. Uh, all of you. But yes, exactly. So um, uh, what has been mentioned is yes, that exactly. they get pretty so, close um, at the end. We'll see what why. Been mentioned is that um, the, the first one was kind of weird. And they also go in pairs. So your theory was that we were doing eight bytes, and then we're just using four of them, and then we're doing another four, and so on, so on. And that's right. So the first thing is that you see the blue columns, they come in pairs. So that's that's what the thing is. So so when you allocate a list of size of one, so you can you actually put two things in there because one, your memory is actually you eight byte allocation. So there is always one, it's just empty. So every time you'll have double. That's one thing. The other thing is that um, Java built in has implementation of list one, two. It's not list 12, but you'll see that. You'll see that in some. Prints in a little bit, you'll, you'll see it says that. list you'll one, that two. Um, that means that they have a special implementation of their own list of size one and two. So those uh, have, this is a special, and, and then n. So those and n also includes zero. N. So that's and why you have this two, those are tiny, and then it gets bigger, and the increases you see there, it's basically the number of memory slots, the eight. Uh, by memory uh, slots, the eight, eight pieces slots. that will be added for each of them. So this one is a bit higher because it does not have a specific implementation, but it's not that bad because 
It's not that bad. Compared to the rest of them, this is going to be singleton. Compared to the rest of you know, them, it's only one singleton. array of nothing. Only one you can't have different nothings. Array of nothing. uh, you can't have different nothings. I guess. I mean, well, if you go into uh, deep into philosophy, maybe. But, you know, for, for, for all intents and purposes and, you know, limitations of time, time and space and all this, let's assume there is only one type of nothing. Let's assume At there is only code. one type of nothing. Uh, but, at least you know, code. it's going to be one of them. Uh, this can be, you know, uh, I don't know, millions, infinity of, of those. This, this is still be, only uh, one. I don't know, the other thing is those. that uh, what they did in Eclipse Collection the is that they actually that, implemented... Uh, they in Eclipse Collection is that they actually implemented... Um, they have a different implementation for all of them, uh, all the way until 10. And that's why 11 goes a bit crazy, because that's like you have implementation for 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and then it was like, and then everything else. Because they looked at the data at that time, and then actually, I think if I remember that correctly, the original implementation was up to 6. And then it got extended to 10. And what they could have done, actually, what, uh, when, we, when we were looking at this uh, thing, Donald was like, oh, we could have actually gone up to 11, because it would have been actually the same as 10, but they didn't. So, but they did. It's a lot of magic oh. that you see in retrospective, right? It's, it's a lot like of magic could have been. You see in retrospective. Um, like could have been. Um, by doing this kind of specific implementations, you can save a lot of space kind of and time and, and, and space in the memory. But the problem is that it will possibly be a potential trade-off. When you have a bunch of different implementations of the same interface, you really need to handle all those and think about which one should it be. And well, obviously not you, but JVM has to do that. Uh, there is a really nice blog that Donald has written called Sweating uh, the Small really Stuff nice in Java, Java, which kind of explains a little bit more of that Java, um, kind of behind uh, the, the idea and thoughts um, behind all this behind, uh, data uh, and how to and uh, calculate that, data, how to look how at all this uh, and all this kind of thing. So if you want to have a look, you can have a look at that blog post there. Like I said, there is a potential trade-off for memory and your mileage may vary. Uh, because and your mileage it depends vary. on your data and depends because on what kind of lists do you have. Like if you have a lot of lists under size 10, well, then is the difference. You have a lot of lists of crazy sizes, well, maybe then you will not see that. Lists of crazy sizes, well, maybe then you will not see that. Yeah, if you have a, a lot of small immutable collections, consider using yeah. Eclipse Collections. If not, well, if not, well, Three libraries. I've mentioned all of them already, but I want to Three give you a little libraries. bit of introduction and compare it to. Anyone knows this thing? Anyone knows this? Okay, you're, you're, yeah, <laughs> Sharon, <laughs> that too. <laughs> uh, but that <laughs> too. What we try to do is to try uh, to compare those libraries to. What we try to do is to uh, different try to compare those libraries to sets of Lego. Uh, different so. Um, Data streams, it's, uh, well, J Java streams uh, is uh, basically like a Lego basic or just regular Lego. It's a lot of building blocks. You can put them in a certain way. You get a kind of nice and corny car. And, you know, but you can also put it together and get a building or a boat or something. Without wood, I'm not sure. But anyway, right? Regular kind of thing. And right. the same thing goes with uh, Java streams. Kind of it has the basic building blocks. With, uh, it Java has, uh, you know, some assembly may require, may be required. Some assembly may require, may be required. On the bright side, you get more uh, of on low level control side, you to your stuff, right? You can actually uh, adjust things and make it things right? just the way you want it. Uh, and it's uh, obviously it's a row-based domain uh, object. So it's, it's domain it's objects, and if you think of domain objects, domain you think of them as a row of things. I said earlier, right? Think of them as a row. Of I really like the age limits on those as well. So I really it probably like translates to well, so no, it does not translate to numbers, uh, number of years of no, experience. But you know, nine plus, you know, it's it's from for kids. Like you know, everybody can use it. Like it's it's. You like don't have to be very experienced like to do that. It's, it's, you don't have uh, to the age limits, by the way, on Legos will obviously vary, uh, but 
by the way, on like um, vary, but it works here. Uh, um, Eclipse Collections uh, is a bit more like a Lego uh, Technic, so you can build much more advanced cars. You can make them a bit more fancy. They have this, you know, bent uh, and uh, special pieces that will not you know, never fit to anything else. And when you take apart that car and dump it in a box, and then you forget what it was, and you find this little weird shaped thing, and it's like, where does that fit? It's that? a little bit like that for Eclipse Collections as well, um, because it, it is more advanced, it has more like extra things built on top of that, and you need to, you have a little bit less of fine-grained control, but you get you a lot of optimizations of because some other people thought about that for you. Like, yeah, like I said, more specialized building um, blocks, it's like optimized for performance like because, you know, it's already fine-tuned little box. You can actually you know, make it uh, performant as well. Uh, it is still compatible with the old, like the uh, basic building blocks, so you can actually still use all the Java collections and streams and all that with together with Eclipse collections. But, you know, sometimes you need to do that and you will be able to do that. Same yeah, goes with Lego. Uh, still row-based approach. Right? Um, still object. Still row based approach. So data frame EC right. is a bit more of uh, data frame EC like is this a thing at the bottom there. It's uh, uh, it, it, I'm not sure right. if it's still alive, but there used to be something called Lego Mindstorms sure that you could program alive, and you could do that. And you could actually, at some point, also program it in Java. It was very popular I got, uh, amongst the Java nerds to do the demos. Look, it's Lego and it runs Java. Yay! <coughs> it's Lego and it's I think like two best things yeah. combined and, uh, yeah I think like two best things for some of us anyway um, but you know it's it's even more specialized um, it's more programmed but, you know, it's, it's things you can put more logic into more that think of it as a uh, very very smart and very fancy excel sheet or like spreadsheet because here you can actually uh, because the join you can actually columns, uh, you can create some kind of counters, you can columns, do you can uh, aggregations, kind of you can counters, find like can sums and everything. It's uh, basically a lot of things that you can like typically do maybe in, in, in a spreadsheet a or a very, do maybe I don't want to say database because it's, it's not, but you, you get the point, right? So now we're doing tabular structures. We're thinking, so thinking of data as tables and you're doing mostly uh, thinking, of a, thinking of a data as a set of columns. So now we're doing column-based approach. So you have so a name of whatever that is, like conference name, so you have and then you have a bunch of names, a collection of names. Then you have a date, and you have a collection of dates, and so on, so on, so on. So now you don't have the over overhead of saying, you know what, this is information about the, uh, the, 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 the conference, and it has all these attributes. It's much higher level approach. Uh, on the it's other hand, it is uh, still compatible with the other two. It can be programmed to accomplish two. tasks, so you can actually uh, write things. I'll, I'll show you some of the examples. So I had, um, I'll, I'll show you some what I was doing is that I, I had this little um, database in uh, Markdown in CSV I of all the conferences I've spoken at, and I wanted to generate an array of flags to the to the countries I've been to. So I had another little table of country codes, so I could generate emoji flags out of country codes, and I would join those two tables in Eclipse Collection data frame AC and generate those, just because it's fun to over-engineer things. But let's don't go there. Okay, data structures. So I talked a little okay. bit about that already. Data structures. Typically, so the way I we did that was for uh, Java streams Typically and Eclipse collections. We, we went with a record. Uh, so it's it's a kind of you could have used we Java class, but now we have so records, so we should use your records. You have event name, you have a country um, object you have event name, because, you know, you, you have a pointer object. to another country thing because, and you know, that you, will you be seen here in a set, thing, set country, set country. Seen. Now that's here we have all the like name and, now you know, maybe a latitude, longitude, whatever. And also and like country know, code and emoji flags and all those kind of things. You can put that into that object, right? Track count, speaker count, you know, all this stuff that you've seen in a table. 
accounts. We have it there. You know, for Java streams, we we'll put it into a regular two regular sets. For streams, we'll one for a conference, one for all the countries sets. that ever exist one everywhere, and then with all the metadata about the country. Um, for uh, data frame, we do it a little bit different. So here we actually for have two frame, tables. We, we have one different. table so of all the data about the conference, and we have all the, uh, all the data another data table of all the countries and their country codes, well, because that's the only thing that we really need. By the way, um, all these links here are By the way, clickable. Um, so whenever you go into the presentation and you click on that, you'll go right into the code, and then you can magically go back. And then you can see, it's actually it's back. actually an ID in the back there. See, it's actually it's actually an ID. I wasn't lying. The back there. Um, if you want to really understand how this API and all works, because here we'll be focusing a lot on the memory and how you can optimize these things. But if you really want to understand how this uh, code and everything works, we've done uh, a talk about that at DevNexus last year and also DevOps Greece. We've done a similar talk there talking about the APIs of this libraries. So this was, this is a spin-off from that, like based, uh, based on on the same libraries like and same data uh, sets, but now we're talking about the memory of this. Same data sets, but now we're talking more graphs, about more numbers, and more, uh, uh, more, more, graphs, more, more, more fun stuff. More, uh, so now we're talking, uh, now let's have a look a little bit more about, so uh, at, talking, uh, sorry, uh, uh, at immutable and immutable uh, data uh, sets uh, and, uh, and uh, how that looks. So here we have, Java set, Java so list, Eclipse collection set, Eclipse Java collection set, list, Java and list, data frame set, because there is no sets and lists and everything is just data frame. Data frame. There is no sets and lists and everything is just data frame. So first thing you see is that sets is uh, so for mutable and immutable. It's crazy, uh, for mutable right? and immutable Kind of half. You half crazy. the size by just right? saying two kind immutable. Of half. You half the size by just saying um, immutable. For um, lists, it's still different, but not that big. Lists, for Eclipse collections and big. Eclipse collection uh, sets and lists, it's and nearly the same, but still a little bit lower than what is still a little bit lower than what's what's uh, in what's in the uh, what's what's in what's, uh, in, what's uh, in the other ones. But then, uh, what's in the other ones? Do, 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 do you see but anything? So I told you, right? Do data frame EC is built on so top of right? Eclipse collections. Data frame EC is and built on top of Eclipse collections. All of those and things here, like this is Eclipse collections, this is Eclipse collections. Here, so right? in the background, this thing is using sets and lists and stuff and things. How comes it's half the size? How comes it's half the size? Hmm? <laughs> there, there is a hint uh, in, in uh, like, I, I don't know if you notice. So the, the way I navigate on the slides is this thing's on the bottom there. The way I navigate on the slides is this thing's on the bottom there. This is the hint. Um, this is the hint. I think that's what you kind of said, no? Yeah. I think that's what you kind of said, no? Uh, but that's, uh, <laughs> anyone knows uh, about pooling? Anyone okay, it's the same people that were, <laughs> that were thinking about the size the of, the, of their arrays and <laughs> data structures. It's really cool. The, Anybody else? Was there more hands? I think I saw like really two cool. hands, three hands. Anybody yeah. else? Was there more hands? I think I saw like We'll two talk about hands, that. Three hands? Pooling yeah. is fun. So what was happening is that uh, the, another okay, so guy so um, called Vlad, that, uh, who implemented data frame, who created the creator of, uh, uh, of data frame, data frame he created knew the about pooling. So he implemented pooling for this his stuff. And so by using that pooling stuff. thing, we actually and decreased a lot of the footprint as well. We Let's talk about pooling. So now we're looking um, at the same kind of, uh, in the same kind of way, we have Java set, Java list, uh, Java EC set, EC kind of list, and data frame. Uh, but now we're doing uh, one million rows loaded uh, into a memory, doing, uh, and we're looking at the data with pooling and without and pooling. We're looking at the data with pooling you see, now we're actually getting to you see, now kind we're of the same to size to than, than, than the, that, that, that the data frame EC is doing. All the green ones, all the second bars, are nearly the same size. 
Are and that's because of the, the pooling that was implemented in data frame EC was implemented in the other ones as well. But so in, in, in Eclipse collections, it's implemented by well, out of so the box, in, in I mean, inside Eclipse the Eclipse collections. Uh, for Java, we had to cheat and use the same implementation uh, Java, uh, because Java does not have that in out of the box. And an important thing here is to think about that. So now we talked a lot about data structures and like, you know, if you just use the right data structure, Structure, it's everything like magically just, just get fixed. The right data structure, it's not about data structures all fixed. the time. It's also about your data. It's not about Right. Data structures all the time. We have a kind of data that keeps right. on repeating. We have we dates have kind of for data 1 million conferences. So we have 2 million, for one million dates, right? One start, so one stop, and all this. Dates, right? one start, but we still have dates for only this. one year, right? So one year, 364, 65, depending on which year it is. Let's say 365 uh, times 2 million. Uh, we don't need that, right? Two million? It's just 365 dates. So that, if we pull right? that, we can actually compress all that to so 365. That, we um, and we have also other things that keep on repeating. We'll look into that in a second. A recommendation here is that you need to know not just about your uh, data you structures, but also know, know a, a quite a bit about your, your data, what you use your data, how you're using it, how you're doing all this kind of stuff. So what is pooling? Well, pooling is a set of unique so values that we can well, put and get uh, out of an object. So if you put uh, something that is already object. there, nothing happens. So if, if you, you put, put something, something that's not there, it's added. There, and happens. next time when you ask for it, you will get the same added. value. So and now instead of having 365 times 2 million dates, now we can actually go down to 365 because it's only 365 objects that we can create uniquely and just store pointers to them instead. Um, what's it useful? Well, for, I mean, what's it used for? Uh, well, obviously, like I said, reducing the number of duplicate values and of a specific set in a memory, uh, but it also is used actually inside JDK as well. There is something called string.intern, uh, you know, value off and all those kind of things and also um, methods on the, uh, on the boxed wrappers because there is a, there is a limited set of unique values a, for those uh, uh, those those values, those values those as well right uh, so you can actually uh, cache them all and just return well, right? that you value how many true falses you can have right things like that how many true falses you can have right Things like that. And here you can see um, the reference count and unique and instances with pool. So we can go, like, for example, the city names. We actually had so only six cities to choose from, and all those six cities kept on repeating, right? Because we just made the synthetic data. We went from one million strings to six. Yeah. Um, start dates and th stop dates, 364, um, because that year was 364, not 65. Um, session types. Um, you remember we had three, one, three, uh, three, session three, types. three session you types, so three, um, uh, uh, three, three, regular three talks, session, lightning so, uh, talks, and workshops, so uh, three of them. Talks, so talks, singleton workshops, set, so one so set of one, so set, one of so each, one like uh, set of one, talk, lightning so talk, and workshop, three. A uh, doubleton set, that's a, of, uh, double set uh, that's a combination of maybe talk and lightning talk or talk and workshop or something uh, like that. Two of those. You have three of possible combinations like there. And tripleton, well, there's obviously only one. So you go all the way. So we had this randomly generated for our case 82,000 conferences that had all three sets types of um, types of talks types of we just don't have to store 82,000 we can we actually store only one so that's really cool so this is how you implemented it, right? So you basically do, so this, this is, is the implementation of right? pools, so and then you do, do this is the implementation a unified of set and then here, you do but you say it's, it's, a, it's a type of pool. Here. And then we do but a pool for it's, it's a string, a for a date, for all these objects that we want to uh, put in there. And um, 
uh, put in there. Uh, this one was a bit and fun. We'll talk a little uh, bit about that. I hope we'll have time to talk about this as well. But it's uh, it was another way of squeezing even more memory out of this thing. Memory when you pull the dates, uh, pull the information that looks like this, dates, uh, more code, more, more wall of code on your screens. More code, more uh, wall but of code basically, you just say, you know, country, get uh, by name, and you country. And then you, say, you if know, that country, exists, you will, get, uh, you will get that. And if, if it doesn't exist, exist you will get, just uh, add it to that pool and return next time, just a pointer to that pool. Pools can be very beneficial once you understand your di Pools data. Use it really wisely. You you do not over, don't just do it, really it because you've heard about this at conference. Conference-driven development? It's... Conference-driven development? Yeah. It's right yeah. below or above. I'm not sure it's like right which way you're going, but it's below right below or above, or sure above like next to uh, CV-driven right development. So <coughs> don't do that. Uh, CV-driven development. So <coughs> don't do that. Let's talk a little bit about uh, comparison. So row-based and column-based. So we looked at comparison. all these kind of things so and just real, and real quick. So advantages, disadvantages, kind of things, disadvantages or challenges. Real, real you know, advantages, you're not supposed to, you're supposed to use the positive words. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so row-based structures. Uh, advantages, <clears throat> well, we have uh, so custom tuning based on understanding of your data. Well, we have, uh, That's uh, nice. Custom pulling and caching data. makes it okay. possible, so you can actually custom cache your stuff. Um, the challenges are, well, you know, you have object um, headers that cost are, well, that you still you need know, to you store. Have object you have object cost. alignment costs, well, another eight bytes. And, you know, it's, it's, it, and it will uh, cost you a little bit. For a column-based approach, is a little bit different. So object header is just cost per column. You don't have to do it for every row. You just do it once. Great compression because you just have you put apples together and pears together and bananas together and all that. You don't have to mix and match. You can cache. It much um, easier, and also you can, you can do performance. It's easier it's to look easier up uh, inside those sets and all these things, right? Uh, inside Challenges? Well, you you have to tuning. You have to be limited. You will well, be limited you, you to tuning, uh, when it comes to the to tuning be uh, because be of the column types uh, and all those kind of things. For example, in our case, I updated this slide like ten minutes ago, half an hour ago, just before the talk, because back in when we were doing this, Eclipse collection data. Frame EC supported only longs, so we had to put all the numbers and all this into longs, which took more memory. Now we got implemented int there as well, and also floats are coming. They're floating. Okay, sorry, I couldn't help myself. Uh, it's getting warm in here, so you know, bad jokes are incoming. So you know, bad jokes are incoming. Um, so what is happening here? So we're actually decided to go. So what is like, I mean, we so already over-engineered it to 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 to, to, to mean, some extent, and then we thought to, like, to why not over-engineer it even more? So what we did is to we tried so to squeeze this little to, this little thing. And the way we did that, one of the things that was I told you will come back to later was to implement for dates instead of doing start date and end date uh, and two different pointers. We actually implemented as a twin, like a top. So, and then you have, uh, for those of you very mathematically uh, loving maths and stuff, uh, you can probably verify that. But for our case, it was um, 66,428 possible combinations. Uh, and then we put all that into a twin and not one million anymore. One million is a little bit bigger. Tiny little bit. So for EC list, we were actually able to compress a per conference so cost from 56 we bytes to 40 bytes. Wow. 16 bytes. bytes. Yay. Wow. But when you do one million bytes. data uh, data but rows, when you do one million data, it actually uh, is noticeable. Rows. See? It actually is noticeable. Everything counts. See? So we went all the way in and did the crazy stuff. So we, so we did 25 million conferences generated. Stuff. I couldn't so run it. At that point, I couldn't run it on my machine generated. because mine has only uh, 32 gigs of RAM, I think. Uh, we had to run it on Donald's machine because he over-engineered his machine as well. It was 96 gigs of RAM he had on his, so he could actually run it. Um, over-engineering is kind of 
is a red um, line here, I think. Uh, <coughs> kind of is a red line here, I think. What is interesting uh, here is that you see this little roundy thingy is that next to data frame EC. Since we don't thingy? have a, a mutable and immutable versions of a uh, for a data a frame EC was that we, we actually uh, put uh, as mutable version a file, so CSV uh, file itself. And you can see that file, for EC so list, so where you squeeze and, and optimize you things, you're getting pretty close to actually raw data. You don't have that many pointers and stuff. As compared to, for example, a Java set where you would have 3.7 million, and here you're at 2.9? Yeah, 2.916. But then you can go to, 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 to the immutable one, and you go from 2.9 to 2.5. So now you already saved like 400 gigs, uh, 400 megs in, in, uh, in the memory. Uh, 400 megs in okay, in I need to speed up a little bit. Um, no, actually yeah, not. That's fine. Um, actually, it's good. No, actually not. Um, then we can talk actually more good. about things. But so, future um, of Java. Then we can talk a little big so crystal ball of Java. Java. So, so there are a few things that are coming that might be relevant when it comes to so optimizing and things that, that we talked about. And I mean, I'm not really trying to sell you to use one collection I mean, or the other collection or write your own or anything. This was a bit of a case study of uh, going full over engineering into a project where you can actually try to understand how things work and try to optimize. But do not, do not, do not even consider, do not even think, promise me, like if you're leaving this room today, that you will not go and go crazy and optimizing like everything as early as possible because it's a very bad idea. I've been told, I think, by a colleague of mine if from, from, from the Bucharest office just yesterday. He said, um, we were doing this, uh, they were implementing this, uh, like in, in Romania, I think, it was implementing a new type of IDs. And the new type of IDs had seven digits, and on the, your old types of IDs, you have six digits. Yeah, can you imagine what happened to that? Do you have the new IDs? Yeah, can you imagine what happened to that? Yeah. yeah. Do you have the new IDs? All the systems, they were optimized for six digits. All the systems, they were yeah. optimized. So don't optimize too early. Do not so do like, hey, we can save some bytes here. Just do this the do database like, hey, column size, here. whatever, Just six. Because, you know, column size, whatever, IDs six. are forever. Because, you know, don't do that. IDs <coughs> are forever. But, okay. Um, <coughs> that was a disclaimer. But, okay. Um, now we can talk a little bit about the future of Java. And future of Java, so when it comes to optimization part, right? So we have a project Lilliput where they're working to actually um, <coughs> reduce, uh, the, the, to downsize uh, these object headers uh, uh, from 128, 128 uh, bits to 64, uh, or even less. So that is, uh, or even less. might happen at some point, so that will is happen. So that will help quite a bit with a lot of things, amongst others this, but also for a lot of other things, saving memory. Um, Project Valhalla has a lot of snacks in there, but this for us, in this case, it's probably the most interesting part is uh, something called value objects. Uh, Brian Gutz, one of the Java architects, uh, they, the architects for Java, not Java, architects in Java, uh, is has written a few blog uh, posts that we have uh, linked here and there, and uh, actually two different posts that are uh, that are mentioned here. So the first one is actually explaining what value objects are and how it works. So the and all first this. one is actually explaining what value objects uh, are an object and model for that. Uh, so uh, basically, uh, like primitives, the value set of uh, an so infinite class like is the set of instances of that class, not class object references. Of right? instances of that class. Not Probably need to read it a few <laughs> times to process. But um, have a look at that. But just if you want um, to learn something new, something cool, and just learn just and th see what's coming, so new, have a look at this. Cool and and there is also Project Amber, which is a bit different, so it's not about the footprint of a of your application, but it's more about thinking of how to think about your code. So we're going from, so this is now more that what I was talking about a bit earlier, it's about data-oriented programming versus Object-oriented uh, programming. Data -oriented programming versus object-oriented programming. Right. Summary. Right. So, um, 
For those of you Sorry. not very security so, um, inclined, you can scan the QR code. For those of you who are very, very serious about security, and you can follow that link in a clear text. It's, uh, I promise it's supposed to be the same. No shady websites will be uh, served from that thing. But the repository, that is actually where all the code, all the presentation and everything is. And if you remove perf at the end, you will you get to the API presentation the of that as well, and code and presentation and everything. API You'll find it all in the repository. Uh, there is uh, the README feel of the README file uh, on the front page is empty. Uh, I will update it at some point soon. Uh, but uh, it's very easy, like the, 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 the structure uh, is super easy, simple, like so you will the, the, figure it out. It's like there's a folder called presentation, there is a folder called source. All right. So, uh, while we're taking pictures, right. following the links, so, and signing up for all uh, the shady websites, I've, 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 I've forwarded you to. Um, I've forwarded you to. What did um, we learn? Like, what was that thing for one what hour about learn? memories and bytes and what integers and thing box things? And uh, we and tried to learn and to see that you can actually uh, do data-oriented programming. We, we, we tried to, we had to find three Fs, so it was feasible, flexible, and fun. Very fun. So I mean, I've, I've heard, I've heard you fun. smile and laugh, so apparently it was fun. We also learned that understanding and measuring your data, understanding your data is actually one of the very important parts of this thing. It's not about, like, frameworks and libraries will fix that much for you. Some of the things you need to fix yourself and understand what you have out of date, like what kind of your data. You can use tools to measure that, for example, JOL, or you can do also, you, can uh, you know, heat dumps and all this stuff. But JOL is really nice to do, like, uh, you can even use it in your code. JOL is really nice to do, like, pooling is a very nice thing. So we know most um, of us have heard of pooling nice on in a so different uh, setting, right? Database um, connection pooling. Uh, it's kind of the same setting, thing, right? You create a bunch of them, pooling. and whenever somebody wants one, you just get one. Instead of creating a new connection all the time. It's a kind of the same thing, but it's different still, right? But this is, if you haven't heard of pooling, it's probably the easiest way to wrap your hand around it. But you will see that it's a little bit different at the end. But you will see that it's a little bit different. Object um, compression is possible when you're going kind of is possible all in, but don't do it too early and don't do it for mutable things. And also think about that your data data structures or data inside your data might be different tomorrow. So hence the size of uh, the ID thing. Uh, <coughs> Uh, by the way, I'm not really, I haven't mm -hmm. verified that ID story, so take uh, it with way, a pinch of really salt, but it looked reasonable, story, so plausible. Salt, like, I've seen it happen in many other places. Y2K, I've anyone? Seen it in many yeah, other they optimize the years, Y2K yeah. Anyone? And those yeah, of you who remember the, the stickers, years, like, yeah. remember to turn off your computers on at, at 31st of December. Turn off your computers on at 31st of December. Oh, God. <laughs> That's the first sign of you getting old, I guess. Uh, <coughs> anyway, um, <laughs> um, all right. So, column-based data, uh, um, tabular right. data. Structures so column -based data require data less custom data. tuning Structures because you're just have less custom columns tuning of things. Primitives columns generate columns. more memory savings Primitives because, again, you don't have any headers. Savings. You just use a set because of primitives. Again, uh, providing support for smaller integral types uh, can save even additional memory. So if you just types can use a different memory. kind of... Uh, what we did, actually, I didn't mention that, but when we tried to what totally, did, absolutely over-engineer things, was to replace, for example, totally int with byte, because we knew that the, the number of conferences would not exceed the byte the size, max, max value of byte. So we actually used that, and then we saved, like, what? Four so bytes or something, use that uh, and then we uh, something like that. So you save a little bit by just okay. changing the data type as well. So you save a little bit. Um, Domain-oriented uh, or row-based approach um, structures uh, are more uh, flexible, but and they can also be tuned manually as well. So you can do much more stuff with them. But then you know, you. But data structures are more memory efficient uh, than their mutable, immutable data structures are more efficient uh, than their mutable counterparts. So whenever you are done 
mutable. Mutating your stuff, so whenever you are put done, into immutable. Mutating your stuff. There is also appendix with all the fun things that didn't fit into this talk, amongst others like uh, how to do like Jackson and all this uh, uh, fun things. Like uh, one of the things that we noticed, uh, for example, things. was that, uh, one of the things uh, that I don't know if you saw it on the bottom here, when we did 25 million uh, rows, uh, in, uh, we Jackson we CSV blew up in our face because out of out of memory. So we just Need. Now you had to also think the way uh, you, not so just the way you use your data structures, but also the way you use your code. So you couldn't do do this read all and just deal with it later. You actually had to go through an iterator and do one and one at a time. Uh, or well, you could optimize to do it in chunks and stuff, but that's not the point, right? All right. So I'll go back to all right this slide because then you'll find. Uh, there is a link how to find me uh, on uh, social media, so I just created one website and put all the social media social links media, there, so uh, because it was becoming kind of out of hand with the uh, all everything that was supposed to take for something else. Um, so yeah, that's me, and uh, um, so yeah. Conveniently, we don't have any time for questions, but well, we can do questions out, out there. Thank you all for coming, and I hope you learned something today. Thank you all for coming, and I hope you learned something today.